Hi folks, clean off your probe tips. We use probing a ton. We use it both to check parts in process and we'll use it to update coordinate systems or do G68 style XY coordinate plane shifts. It gives us a process that helps make excellent parts, except when it doesn't work. And we got bit really the first time ever and we realized uh, our probe had a small chip clinging to the ruby tip. So Ed came up with this idea of, let's just use our Haas Auto Air Gun to clean the probe tip off. So in this video, I wanna show how we can add that code to our machine using either a manual NC pass-through, which is super easy, or what's really cool, I think, is not only adding this into our post, but we're gonna show how we can add it into our post processor as a post property. So when you go to post your program, you can toggle whether or not you want that feature active. Let's dive in. The G-code to do this, we included an M1 option stop. This let us walk over to the machine and actually get a better sense of what does the probe tip look like to help us confirm were we really having a problem with chips clinging to the Ruby tip. Then we're gonna call up our probe. It's T99 for us. Then we rotate the probe at 150 RPMs. We turn on our air blast. We pause for one second to blast the tip and then we turn off the air blast and turn off the spindle. If you don't have the auto air gun on your Haas, two things that come to mind. One, just use flood coolant. Spindle probes can handle the flood coolant no problem, and they should do a pretty good job of washing a chip off of the tip. Or, uh, at least on the Haas machines, they have I.O. boards and M codes usually available, so you can actually pretty easily hack in your own air solenoid and run an airline over it if you wanted to go that route. So obviously one option would be to go into Fusion, Setup, Manual NC, pass through and paste this code in there. You could also save that G-code as a program on your machine and use the alias function. We showed this in the count to 10 parts video where a simple G or M code uh, could call that program, which is another really easy way. Uh, the benefit there is if you wanna make a sort of global change, you change that program once and any file that has that G or M code that queries or calls that probe thing will grab the latest version. But what I really wanted to do in this video was show how we can modify our post and not just modify the post in the back end, but give us a post property. And what I mean by post property is when you go to post, we have created this blow off probe tip checkbox. Uh, really awesome that it's this easy to create this kind of customization and functionality. I'm gonna grab the latest Haas post, save it. And the key to this video is gonna be leveraging the capabilities within Visual Studio Code. If you aren't familiar with it and you wanna learn or do any sort of post modifications, uh, I really encourage you to hop over to our page. We've got a walkthrough video on how to install this and the necessary plugins to make it work the way we're gonna make it work, which is cool because within Visual Studio Code, we can choose CNC selector, 2D, bore, and without having to go into Fusion, we can quickly post test sample G codes that let us see how our post mods work. And even more importantly, when you click a line of G code, watch this, I'm gonna click the M6 in that posted code, look what happens. It takes me to the section of the post processor that created that code. I'm not a programmer. I could not have done all the post mods and work that we've done today in our shop without that trick. I'm gonna be pretty methodical about walking through this. If you're anxious to just see the results, use the timestamps to jump ahead. But I wanna show folks and hopefully build some confidence in your ability to, to tackle this stuff. So I'm gonna close the posted code here just so I have more real estate to view the post processor code. If you start scrolling up, you can sort of see this section starts right here. And this is the if insert tool call, which is kind of the post processor way of saying, hey, we're about to do a tool change and you can see some other properties. And it's actually pretty fun. You start doing this, you start recognizing some terminology and phrasing and so forth. The first thing I wanna do is insert a comment line that helps tell me I'm gonna be doing this work in the right spot. So I'm gonna go back to my bore and figure out exactly where that M6 was again. So the actual M6 tool call happens right here. But if we look up above that, we've got three if statements. And these are conditional statements or questions that are checking things before the actual tool change occurs. So what I'm gonna do is add another if statement. I'm gonna say if, and there's a command tool.type equals or is tool probe. And that's a really cool way of 
confusion in the post recognizing that if in the tool library it's defined as a probe, we've got the ability to recognize that that is a probe. So I'm just going to start by saying if it's a probe, write comment, JWS tool is a probe. I'm also going to start by commenting that this is JWS, the work and the date I'm doing this. Uh, it helps me remind me that I made these changes and uh, the dates uh, help me tell when I made it. And finally, um, the searching for my initials is usually a quick way to jump through the code to see where I've made edits. So we don't get any comment here because this is using a bore. This is not using a probe. So if we hop down to probing and post a probing op, the great thing is I don't care what the tool number is. And sure enough, we get my comment line. Awesome. Next, we're gonna speed this up as I write through the M and G codes that give us the code that we want. Okay, we've got the basic code written and it's all very similar. It's write block M format dot format and then what we want. So M format dot format three posts an M3. G format dot format 04 posts a G04 dwell. Let's see if this works. Okay, I think we've got code posted. Now let's start cleaning it up. I'm gonna add a right line that's gonna space things out. You'll see that here in a second. We can take out our debugging. This is a probe. And what that does, it simply adds a space before and after this snippet of code and tells me the start of tip cleaning and the end of tip cleaning. And now we have one fatal flaw here, which is that we haven't called the probe yet to run this command. And we know if this code runs, it's already a probe. We can actually just copy this tool block code from right here. This is going to say T, whatever the probe number is, M6, which is what we want. Usually for me as a beginner program, if I have an error like this, it tells me it's 2264, which is this next line. Usually it means I forgot a paren or semicolon. And so sure enough, this last paren you can see relates to that. So I think I need to add one more paren and sure enough, that closes out the uh, right tool block open paren. And now if I hit save, it will automatically repost it and we're good. Great, so now T4 M6, because in this case, the probe is T4, starts turning it at 150, air gun on, dwell, air gun off, spindle off. I'll fast forward through here. I'm just gonna add comments. These help the operator and they help me or anyone else who's gonna look through this code or modify it later. So now let's figure out that post property. If we take a look at some of the values here, we see there's something called use chip transport. I bet you the word transport doesn't show up anywhere else in this post other than where I care about it. So let's search transport. And sure enough, we see something here, here, Okay, here we go. Look at this list of everything. If we scroll up, we can see this section is called user defined properties. Perfect. Uh, if you start looking at some of the available fields, title description group, uh, I didn't recognize group at first until take a closer look at the options here. And you have group zero, one, two. So I'm fine putting it in group two. So let's take this whole section and paste it and add my initials and we'll call it tip clean. We can leave it in group two. We can Boolean means just yes or no, defaults it to being uh, off or false, and we should be good. So just remember that we call it tip clean, and then all we have to do is jump back down and when we run this first if statement we're checking to see is the tool type a tool probe what we can do is add a second condition to say and tip clean and i believe you don't need to do anything else because the default in javascript is if you just say and tip clean it defaults to saying and if that is true we need both of these criteria to be true which is what the double and says it's a probe and we've checked tip clean so let's load this post up in Fusion and let's try it real time here. Use a local post. Okay, okay. And sure enough, we get blow off probe tip right here. Click post. Okay, nope. One error, tip clean is not defined. 
Okay, so this stumped me. So I went back to transport because we know that works as a post parameter, post property. And if you start searching through, you can see the if statement that relates to the chip transport says if get property chip transport. So what we need to do is paste this in instead of just the tip clean. So and get property. Post it again. Okay, facing operation real quick. Okay, did not post there. Let's see if was it unchecked by default. I don't know, I reselected the post. It may have turned it off. Okay, yep, it was off. Check that now, post. Look at that. Start of tip cleaning. Calls the correct tool uh, number for the probe. We use T99. M6 as the tool change, M3 spindle on, air blast on, dwell, air blast off, spindle off, end of tip cleaning. How awesome is that? Super cool, I think it's a fun quality of life improvement and it's just a huge confidence builder when you can modify and tweak things to do what you want. Hope you folks learned something, hope you enjoyed, take care, see you soon.